We got some action going on here. Everywhere. So yeah, honey, it's looking good. Thinning out a little bit. It's going back to how it looked in the spring. Lots of crappy foliage going on here. So is it unusual for this garden to be so colorful so late in the season? What's up? No. Really? I mean, I don't, it, yeah, it still has some color, but it's not like banging. I guess I just wasn't paying attention last year. I guess not. Happens sometimes. Well, the thing is, last year about this time, I redid this whole side. So you wouldn't have really saw anything. Um, I kind of cut back and replanted and revamped, but this year, I mean, it's new. I just did it last year, so this is going to kind of stay where it is. And I'm not going to do too much moving around. I'm just doing some cleanup that I can get away with right now. So if you didn't do this, this would just become a jungle of a mess. Um, yes, and then all the insects would live in all of this crappy foliage because they would overwinter in there. And then you'd have big problems next year. You'd start off your year with problems. So this is kind of just management at the moment. Now, do you enjoy this part of gardening? Yes, because I find fun stuff. I don't like it because it's the end of my season kind of it's like admitting it's time to start singing it a lullaby let it go to sleep for the winter we still have some months left but um once it starts getting cold you know it's all gonna pretty much be done anyway these are done you no. know it didn't really seem like we did a lot of work this year as much as we have in the past uh, we did on other people's gardens but not ours or am i speaking for myself no Th this garden as much as it's a big job and there's a lot to do it's really a lot of work in the spring as it grows in it's just weeding like i take a pass through the garden pretty much every day and just grab what i see manage it and it really, everything else just kind of does its thing. As long as I stake what needs to stake and um, you keep an eye out for things that may get out of control. This garden is stock, or stacked and it's helpful because it does um, act as a weed barrier. If you have so many plants in here that grow in together, the weeds don't really have a chance to um, take over. And that's why you find little sprouts like this in the bare ground. And these are just super easy to take out. Look how beautiful these berries are. Fall, yeah, let's point them out after I come all the way over here. <laughs> fall has um, its perks. It's it also perks. helps if you're a husband out there and you accidentally step on a few plants on purpose. Uh, your wife will not want you to be helping her do this. That's portion. not true. I'll make you buy me more and make you help me. Yeah, that's why she doesn't have me in there. I look at the deer got this day, Lily. Didn't don't even have to cut it back myself because the deer are like. Now the deer get worse as the season goes on, don't they? Because they kind of know with the uh, lack of I, sunlight that yeah, winter's well, coming. So I just sprayed everything again with deer fence because in the shade garden they started cutting down the back side of my hosta garden. It's on the back side, which is fine, but at the same time, they're helping me get a jump start and remind me to spray because when I see how much they've eaten, I'm like, ooh. And then if every night that goes by that you don't cut or that you don't spray, more and more gets chowed down. But it's, it's later in the season, so not really too much um, damage even though they are, you know, mowing things down over there. This, I hate to cut this back, it's still got color. I don't think I'm gonna. So is there a time when you're supposed to or you're just trying to uh, get ahead here? So what, well, I was explaining earlier that if you have a decent season, you can leave these seed heads for the finches 
But the problem is it's such a wet season here that we have leaf spot and fungus on our leaves. So for me this year, I normally do leave. I don't, I don't really cut all the way back until gosh, late October, November. Um, but this year is different. It's just, it was so wet. Everything is really jammed in here. So, ew. Now, how do you know which plants to cut down to the ground and which plants to kind of leave alone? The ones, I don't know. I've been doing it too long to not know. So how would somebody because, who doesn't know figure this you'll out? You'll start to see most perennials when they, after they send up their bloom stalk and they kind of look crappy, you cut that off and they start um, growing new foliage at the base. So if you see that new foliage, if you want to cut it back, you can, because it still has a way to feed itself. And that's what I'm doing now. I'm cutting diseased leaves and old flower heads off so that I can get that new foliage to start generating and to open up some air circulation in here and to stop the bugs from taking over. So now all these things you're throwing on our lawn, does this mean I'm gonna have a bunch of wild flowers now I gotta worry about out here? Uh, not with our hard ground. Nothing will germinate on our ground. If you throw it actually in the woods, it will. Yes, you'll get some blue. So if I take a pile of this stuff yes. and toss it out in the you woods. Should. Every time I throw a seed head, seeds fall out. So yes, not hard at all. And you absolutely can. Look at this. I guess I'm coming around the other I'll way. I'm going to show or I'll show you. Watch. You ready? They didn't really fly at all, did they? It was a dud. What was it? It was in? a dud. So look, this is this tropical milkweed that I love, ooh, which is also again loaded with. This is the seed pod that opens, and all that fluffy stuff has one seed. It has one seed attached. It's like a little parachute. To the fluffy, yes. And it's oh, I just dropped the seed, so I guess we'll have some in there. But anyway, this is what they look like. And it's so cool. And that little fluffy stuff carries the seed wherever it may find itself. And, or it's gonna find its way into a Ziploc because I'm gonna grow more of that. It was beautiful. Here, you can take that. Gee, thanks. <laughs> don't lose it and don't blow on it. What am I supposed to do with this? And here, would you like a lollipop of aphids? I only have two hands and one's holding one thing. They're so gross. So gross. So what are you gonna do? And I can't cut this one because it's in bloom. You gotta kill those first? Nah, I can drown them. I can drown them. I feel bad. Could you imagine having a life as an aphid? Everything wants to eat you and nothing, nobody wants you on their plants. It is what it is. But at least I was able to collect some seed pods Ugh, aphids on the pods, which I, those I have to take off. Oh, they smash really easy. But anyway. I'm not filming that. It's too graphic. Oh, look, you just rub your hands up. Rub your hands and they come off. Ugh. It's not pleasant, but you know what? I don't want them to wreck my seed pods. So this is a live one. Put that Gee, over yeah, on thanks. the ground. I'll be sure to. You can put that on the ground. Drop that somewhere. So anyway, that's that. There you go, Cleo. Don't catch aphids. Here, I got one more. Ooh, that one's loaded. Now, you do realize I have milkweed in my hand as well? Yeah. You're a talented man. <sighs> yes. And filming steady. Yeah. So you really have to almost come in here and clear this whole thing out? You're going to be here for like a week. Maybe two. Like these are all really ready to go. Some of the stalks are really far gone and done. But Boy, I really wish I could help you with this, but. I wouldn't let you help me. What do you mean? You just said you would. No, I give you certain jobs like to pick up everything I'm throwing 
mindlessly out into the lawn, but I would not trust you with my clippers in my garden. See no guys, offense, I told you, just step on a few plants and you'll definitely be out of a job. Just pretend you feel bad though, when you do it. Mm. Listen to you giving pointers. So usually though, when the first frost, that's gonna be coming here in about a week or two. No. Yeah. October. Well, uh, October's in about a week or two. Oh, actually you're right. Yeah, I guess we're late. Late October though. Now right? you can do this after the frost. You can really do this whenever you want. You're you just- You can. I'm doing this a little bit in advance because holy cow. More aphids. On the back of this leaf, look at that. That's terrible. Now why, why are they so bad this year? They love milkweed. It's not really that they're bad. They like milkweed and they like Heliopsis, but you know what? The milkweed's kind of being a sacrificial plant and you, taking one Am for I the stepping team. on this thing? You can, sure. Don't try this at home. Oh, God. The horror that lies beneath my feet. Mm. Oh, there's a lot of horror beneath your feet. Only when I take my sneakers that off. Is, yes. God help everybody if you're taking your... Yeah, you don't want me walking barefoot in your flower bed. No, although it may kill what's ailing it. Ailing what? The flower bed or my feet? The flower bed. Yeah. At least my feet will smell fresh. No. Yes, they will. It'll smell like pugs. In here. It'll smell like deer fence, yeah. which is a lot worse than my feet. Uh, occasionally. I don't understand why a uh, pea fence doesn't work with all these pugs lifting their legs all over the place. Well, it probably does work, but it kills the plant. So how would you know? You hey, sick. I just work here. Oh, yeah, do you? Yeah. Yeah, well, let's see it. Oh, I'm sure we'll see it. Plenty of it. Yeah, when? To be continued. In the season finale. That'll be the season finale. Oh, really? We're going to have a finale? Yeah, it's when I show up to work. Ugh. After I'm done doing everything? Well, oh, I'm no. supervising. Look what I did. And this killing aphids. You're investing in the garden. I pulled this up by accident. I think I still have post-traumatic stress from all that mulching you made me do earlier in the season. Freaking May? Yeah. Get over it then. It's hard to get oh over God. it. Oh my God. In May. It doesn't matter when you go back to the scene of the crime. I'm having flashbacks when I'm in your flower bed. Flashbacks? No, backs. I don't want you to hurt yourself tonight. No. So what else do uh, we need to teach other people about Doing what you're doing. Who's we? Well, you got a mouse in your pocket? Well, I do think my questions are questions that many people would want to ask, especially. Actually, you're, you're talking an awful lot because I'm working and I'm not, usually I don't let you talk too much when I'm yapping, but I'm busy. So you're, t you're taking advantage. Well, I'm sure a few of your fans will just love this video to death. Yes. All your male friends out there. <laughs> uh, there are more female haters of you than male. Oh, please. Yes. You know, come on, ladies. Don't be jealous because I know more about gardening than you. You actually know more this year than you've ever known. Well, I could probably name some plants. Let's try. Well. Let's try. All come right. This, what is this? this yes. That is a day lily. Wow. What's this? That is a cauliflower pink poindextra. All right, I didn't know that one, but it could be. No, that's a sedum. A sedum. That's a cone flower right there. Yep. This is a black eyed Susan. Yep. This. <laughs> is a hydrangea that's yes. seen better days. Wow, look at you. Usually you say hibiscus. Well. 
you actually might be learning something. Can you be taught stuff? Because when you drop your clothes to take a shower and you walk out, you should just take them with you. So if you can learn this in a season, you can learn a little housekeeping also, my dear. <coughs> well, that's only after me helping you for hours on end doing gardening work where I might forget to pick up the towel because I can't bend over. That's not true. You just did it before dinner when you took a shower. Well. Yeah, so let's not. Let's not. I'm a little brighter. Than how about just clapping your hands and saying, hooray for honey. He knows something. I'm, a, I'm proud of you. Thank you. And so should your fans be. Because right. when the season started, all I did was complain about prices. And now you've seen the value of my purchases yes oh well, good because there's a whole line of plants in the driveway i have to tell you about i was wondering i thought those were for a client well i'm my biggest client those it, are going to be the rose garden to rock garden expansion plants so those are your plants <laughs> yes they are is this like the fall giveaway 50 percent off Actually, they were. Uh, two of the shrubs were 50% off. And you know me and deals. And you think so because cool. I'm this. always this penny is... pinching, I'm going to let, let it fly that you got a deal? Come here. Stop walking away from me. So this is a, this is a um, golden hyssop. Smell it. I'm gonna sp uh, and look, when the flower's done blooming... Look, you just turn this upside down and out come the seeds. And these little babies will self-seed anywhere. Did and they you... are gorgeous. The bees love them. This hyssop has lime foliage and then bright purple flowers. It doesn't have it now um, because it's pretty much done. Why does it smell familiar? What does it and smell this, like? Look at the seeds. Look how easy this is. So this you... was one of the easiest seeds to collect. And you know what? This is a perennial. It's beautiful. It's a pollinator magnet. It looks gorgeous because it's limey and foliage. And then it has the blue. Oh, right here. Look, I can show you. Here's a baby plant that self-seeded that I left. That's See? A, that's a hyssop. That's a golden jubilee hyssop. And that is one of the seeds in my giveaway. What is this smell? It smells it's, familiar. Yes, it smells. It's hyssop. Hyssop? It's, it's, a, it's an herb. I know, but where do you smell that? Like, it smells like something I've smelt before it could be in soap it could be in whatever did you hit that with deer fence no yeah it wasn't a good smell this yeah yeah do you mind oh your hyssop almost gave me hiccups <laughs> yeah you nailed it with deer fence that's what it is <laughs> that's uh yeah, your nose oh that's why it smells is, familiar your nose is off if you think this smells like deer fence actually you know what I'll, I'll spray something with deer fence and let you smell it. You know, there's a stark difference. You don't know a good smell when you smell one. Yeah. I smell a lot of BS. All right, so I think for now, this is a good layer of removal done. I think you've made a massive mess that I'm going to have to clean up. Make sure you film that. You know what though? You know what's nice? If you look though, this, like it's beautiful. It still has like some color pops and it still has some like, like the um, lavender is kind of that bluish silvery hue. And then this is limey. And then that's a, that beauty berry has the dark burgundy foliage. The berries are pink coming out on the viburnum. Like there's still prettiness, even though things are past peak, so. I kind of like it when it's thinned out a little bit. Yeah. I mean, this this under here, under the birdhouse, is just a disaster. I got to get in there. That'll have to be a before and after. That'll be like a yeah. entering the jungle. But Pugster Blue, you know, I got to say, do you remember how I was all crazy about the Pugster Blue when I found it? Big, fat, purple cones, you know. You know? Yeah, you thought that because we have pugs, I was going to be like, cool, we well, have a plant named after our dogs. No, I, but I did, but I did love this. I fell in love with this plant. So after it bloomed, it didn't really send up any, like, it took a while to kind of get new foliage. But look at, 
Now it's going to be loaded again. It's starting to get covered. What's that? It looks like there's something under there. Or what's the pink or the purple? This? Yeah. Yeah, that's a bloom. There's start. It's starting to do a rebloom, but it took forever. I mean, when did I put that in? Wasn't that in in the beginning of June? And here it is September. It took two months to rejuvenate new buds. That's not good. Yeah, but when you put it in, it had buds on it. It was in bloom, yeah. which is why I bought it. But then when I deadheaded, usually when you deadhead a butterfly bush, it comes back with blooms, like new new blooms. This took two months. That's a long time. But it looks healthy. Like, it is happy here. I'm just not thrilled. I do like that it's kind of bluish, too. I don't know how a plant could be deadheaded and then be happy there. I deadheaded the blooms. It likes to, because its whole purpose is to bloom. So if you deadhead the blooms, that's what they call it when you deadhead the, when you take the blooms off. You take the old blooms off. So a plant will actually want to be deadheaded? I don't know. Well, the whole reason a plant produces a bloom is so that the, it, it, um, the bloom at the end of its prettiness will create seeds and that's how the plant makes more of itself it multiplies that way so the plant actually produces blooms to multiply but if you deadhead it it's like oh crap i don't have any way to multiply so it puts new blooms up right you understand how that works so for us we're like oh deadhead and more and more will come because the plant is like oh crap i have no reproductive parts now let's i need to send up more you understand so when the plant sees you coming with the clippers it's not it's happy? It's crossing its legs. <laughs> yeah, that's what I understand. Yes. I don't know. Honestly, some plants really respond well to, to pruning and to deadheading. And, like, some don't care. Oh, boy. Look at this. This is deer. Look at the deer, deer, deer. Now, do plants have feelings like when the deer is eating the plant, is the plant like, ow, Ay, get out of here? No. I think if it did, it would be, it's, this would be wilting, like it's pouting. Why wouldn't it, it like smack it with a branch or something? It's got like 20 arms. It should defend itself. I don't understand plants. I really don't. Uh, you don't have to. So you don't feel bad when you're deadheading these plants? Like you don't feel like this is the end of our relationship for a while? See you well, in a year? it makes me sad because I know that it's just the end of the the summer the romance is over yes my ooing and eyeing i'm now taking its head off i'm like a praying mantis right i'm like ooh, i'm all in lust over my plants and then i'm like bah! what have we discovered here today our very first ever praying mantis where is it i can't even see it he's he's blending in he's not happy when you get close but he's right there especially on, when you got oh, hugs it. <laughs> So what does he feast on? Insects, basically so, any live insect or, um, I don't know, sometimes if they're big enough, they can eat toads and spiders and all sorts of stuff. So he's a good bug. Yeah, well, he'll eat anything. I mean, I don't, think he, I don't think he differentiates between good and bad, but he, when he's hungry, he's hungry. Look at him, he's like ready. Now, he's is it so true hungry. that they're the female praying mantis Eat the male after sex? Yes. Yes. Well, I happen to like that. Hopefully he's a male. <laughs> we don't need one of those around here. Actually, what? I hope we have a couple because then we'll get an egg case somewhere. And then we'll have them in our garden. This is amazing. This is our very first ever. I've never seen a praying mantis in our yard ever, ever, anywhere. Oh, good. Start eating some mosquitoes there, buddy. I know. They're terrible this year. It's ridiculous. Isn't he cool? What's he praying for? More bugs? Yes, he's praying for dinner. Ooh, there he goes. He's not happy. No, he, he doesn't like to be messed with. He's like, he's trying to eat and... Oh, he's cool though. I'm so excited. Isn't it illegal to kill a praying mantis? I think so. We Honestly, I'm surprised I've never seen one in this yard. I mean, and I've looked for egg cases in the winter with the kids and everything, but this is so exciting. He's like... He's not happy that he's the first one because, well, too much attention. Hey, buddy, don't believe anything she says. She's going to eat you in the end. 
That's not nice. I love this guy. Oh, well, look at his little head. Bob and his little head. should warn him about the women. <laughs> I don't think it matters. Well, Their whole job is to procreate. So I think you're way overthinking this. Well, I think they're ugly and they shouldn't be allowed to pre procreate. Well, you know what? A lot of people are ugly and shouldn't procreate, but they do. Yeah, well, not us, honey. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, we're, we're, we're excluding ourselves? Well. I'm sure there's lots of people who think we're ugly and shouldn't procreate. I'm just trying to think positive. Yeah. Our kids turned out all right. Could have been worse. Yeah, it's true. And we have four beautiful pugs. No, those, those, those are two pugs that should not have procreated. Well, you know what? I think you're just a wealth of information and I've learned so much just watching you work today. Yeah, well good. Grab a, grab a pair of clippers and join in, honey. Looks like I'm gonna need a rake. And a tractor. And a yeah. Wagon. Look at this big boy. Now. So the other day I was at the nursery getting those plants and on the caryopteris that I bought, the purple flowering shrub over there, there was a bee and it was in the early morning so it was still wet out and so he was kind of just sitting there and um i'm like oh he's got to stay here because i didn't want to bring him home like he was happy there i didn't want him in the car freaking out on me or whatever so i like i scooped him up with my hand and i put him on a plant and the guy was just looking at me like i was crazy I'm like bees don't sting you when you don't attack them he's like you're talking to a house painter honey i i have i'm like the bee whisperer with a can of raid no yeah i yell when i have the can well, you, of raid you 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 have are not the bee whisperer when it the bees are different than hornets and yellow jackets those things will murder you if they could uh those don't we have a beehive under our porch that i have refused to kill the bees because, because you can't get to them but also there's no reason to kill them they're not harming anybody they're pollinators honey they're we not. need bees Oh my God, your heart grew three times this year. Well, I gotta get in here. People can change. Yeah. Well, good. I want honey bee boxes and I want an electric fence around them and I wanna raise honey bees. Could you imagine what the honey would taste like with all these different flavors? You know that honey actually changes based on what the bees are using to collect the nectar and. Pollen. So if we had honey bees, this honey would probably be extra sweet, right? Because of all the flowers. That's not extra sweet. Honey is sweet naturally, but it would be, it would have different flavors. Like sometimes um, it depends on what you have a lot of that they love. Would it, uh, like, would we, would we have deer fence flavor? <laughs> That's, that is a possibility. So maybe we shouldn't have the bees here. Well, they're not, I don't, I don't spray the flowers. I spray the foliage. So, so deer fence doesn't like scare away the insects? I don't know. Like if you were a bee flying towards a bud and you took a deep breath and you were like, Ooh. Well, maybe they don't have noses. It smells like more than bee, bee butts. So look at this. So this is that great blue lobelia. And it was laying on the ground, like, and obviously all the new growth grew up. But under here, look, this actually is putting down roots. So it would actually grow and spread like this if you let it. Like, you could plant this and it would grow. I'll be sure to do that. That's why it's way over here and not behaving underneath the birdhouse where it belongs. Look it. This is a plant. This is a branch that laid down. See this? See how it went perpendicular to the way it's so normally supposed to grow? And it put roots down. So this is a full-size plant that you can plant somewhere. How much do you think that plant's worth that you just threw on the ground? 20 bucks. Let's start potting these. Look it. This one also laying on the ground. That one's got a weird bug on it. But anyway, so... You never, you never know how plants will grow. Oh, look at this. This is interesting. This is actually putting roots down in the corners. If you planted this whole thing, it would grow. If you planted it like this, 
it would it would send stalks up. These, there's tons of plants right here. So you definitely have to cut these back or they'll take over the whole garden. Well, the thing is, here's the thing. I don't like to put invasive stuff where, you know how if a plant puts down its roots and then it sends out all these runners? And then you're like, oh man, I'm pulling it and it's coming out way over there. And then I see a sprout coming out over there. I don't put those plants in my garden. I put ones like this, where it's like, eh, if it lays down, it puts a root down and then I can just pull it right up. There's no suckers. It's just literally trying to survive wherever it has room. And I'm okay with that. So that's probably the most invasive plant you have in your garden then? This one? Yeah. No. Believe it or not, poppies are. But I love poppies and I can pull them out easily. So they kind of, they self-sow wherever they want to. Oh no. Oh no, I left it. Yay. I thought I cut off a flower stalk, but I didn't. And like this. See, the bees are still liking it. But it did dry out back there. Had a lot of problems over there. Whoa, and this thing. Oh, this is going to drop like a million weeds. Be very gentle. Throw! Get all those So all those are, are plants I could plant? Not that thing. That thing's a weed That's with a bunch a weed. of seeds. It looks just like the other ones, though. Yeah, really. but it's not. It's not. It's hard to tell, folks. They may look cute, but some are not. Yeah, but some weeds are actually nice-looking flowers. I like Honestly, those. Honestly, a weed is only a plant in a spot that you don't want it. So goldenrod is everywhere, but it looks pretty in yeah. the fields and the meadows. That's a weed. That'll, that sends out runners like crazy. I would never put goldenrod in here. Um, but, yeah, so, you know, a lot of, a lot of people are into the native you know, bringing kind of back the native plants and the wildflowers and the meadowy stuff. That's kind of the trending right now. I like so. goldenrod. There's no way to keep like a couple goldenrods. I do. I have goldenrod over by the sunflowers. I have two dwarf goldenrods, which actually behave. So I'm testing them over there because if they do perform well and they're not invasive, they may make it to this garden. What's that other wildflower that looks kind of cool? It comes like in three different pinks. It's always by the side of the roads. There's asters. There are, there's a wild mustard. Sometimes you'll see old ladies on the side of the road yanking these wildflowers <laughs> oh. off the bank. Hopefully they're putting them in a vase and not in their yard. I think I tried to plant a few of those years a ago. You know what? There's a place for everything. You know, like on our driveway coming up, if we have to redo it, I would love to have a wildflower meadow garden where we do the coneflowers and the goldenrod, like the native stuff. And we can plant the zinnias and just let them self-seed and just have this, in my mind, this would be a gorgeous country driveway all the way up. That's really what I would like to do here. Because that will, you don't have to do anything. You plant, you can plant, um, milkweed you mix it all up and then it just like self seeds everywhere and it keeps coming back and i'm gonna try it. i'm gonna take all this stuff that you took out of here but i have to put it in a sunny area right that is correct so oh, i think i think i'm gonna put it sun. how cute are these cute as a button i think i'm gonna put it down by my just pumpkin garden here honey oh thank she you she loves me she loves me not let me know what it says uh I think we all know the answer to that question. Oh, I just adore you. All the feelings mutual, my dear. Yeah. I love spending time in the garden with you, learning about all this stuff. Do you? Yes. Do you? Does this just light your fire? Well, you know, it's okay to be macho and masculine like me, but it's also <laughs> nice to have a softer side. Oh yeah, and what's the softer side? Not doing anything while your wife works hard in the garden? Just worshiping my wife and everything she does. That's part really? of being softer. Really? You worship me? That's really weird and scary. Well, maybe more people should, should worship, worship their wives. You should worship your pollinators that keep everything going and beautiful. And keep I'm going to worship happy. you until you tell me you have a headache. <laughs> That might happen and, sooner than yeah. that. Your, your finger's over the lens. Oh, please. You I can see. see everything. Oh, you can't see. You so can't is this see. it? Is there anything else? What? I don't know. I, I don't know. This is like turning into a mini-series here. Um, I'm not. 
I'm not doing anything except for doing garden cleanup. You're over there yapping your trap today. So I think this is what we're going to be dealing with here in the next couple hours, folks. Me doing some yard work, watching my lovely wife make more work for me. But all comes with the territory. Yeah. Right, honey? Yep. Love you. Happy wife, happy life. To be continued. <laughs>